Hi, my name is Brad Cohen and I serve the Township of East Brunswick as its mayor. But when I'm not mayor, I'm an OBGYN physician and I actually am on staff at St. Peter's um, University Hospital. But I'm here today to help the county uh, and talk to you a little bit about healthcare questions that have come to the county. Uh, and uh, in particular, I'd like to talk today a little bit about the issues involving COVID and pregnancy. As you well know, um, the COVID virus is a novel virus that was in, determined and discovered in December of 2019, just a few short months ago. And so our information on how it affects pregnancy is really based on limited experiences and limited numbers of uh, case reports and no long-term studies that we have. Um, before we get started though, please keep in mind that pregnancy should be considered an extraordinarily fulfilling and joyous time. You should be looking forward to this. This should not define, uh, be, be defined by a virus and do not let the pandemic take anything away from that. In fact, if anything, new life should be an ultimate triumph over illness and disease. So let's get to the questions that people have. Most of the questions that we have can either be answered by clinical studies that have been done in the past that are limited or from our experiences with other viruses such as MERS and SARS or the regular influenza virus that we get seasonally. Uh, there's just not enough information about that. Uh, however, women who are pregnant are generally considered to be a little bit more susceptible to infection because physiologically the immune system is depressed during pregnancy. One of the main reasons we require or suggest that you do the flu vaccine when you're pregnant. So again, simply not enough information. However, we have seen that pregnancy loss, whether that be miscarriage or stillbirth, has been seen in greater numbers in people with SARS or MERS. And we also know that high fevers in the first trimester have been associated with early pregnancy loss and certain birth defects. There's been an increased number of preterm births among mothers who have had COVID viral infections. However, it's unknown whether or not that preterm birth was actually due to the virus or whether it was due to another cause. Um, also based on limited information, information from other uh, flu infections, from the SARS infection or MERS, respiratory infections in pregnancy have been associated with preterm birth and low birth weight babies. And like I mentioned earlier, any high fever in early pregnancy, whether it's from a cold, a flu, or any other uh, infection, have been associated with certain birth defects. So I would expect that that would be the same thing for a COVID infection. Again, uh, no information right now about the neonatal health or development. However, prematurity and low birth weight have been associated with long-term health uh, effects for that infant, regardless of its cause. To date, there's no evidence that the virus has been found in breast milk. Uh, because COVID virus is generally believed to be a respiratory infection, and it's spread through respiratory droplets seen in things like coughs or sneezes, it's recommended that lactating mothers who are known to have COVID or suspected of having COVID should wear a face mask while they're nursing, and they should wash their hands before touching the infant. Uh, any decision on whether or not you should start to nurse or whether you should continue nursing is something that, you sh that should be made between you and with your uh, health care provider. And, when, and if you express milk with a pump, you should wash your hands before touching the pump and you should wash your hands before touching any bottle parts. Properly make sure that you properly clean and pump after the pump after each use and we strongly consider that you have someone else who is well feed the infant until you are well. Well, most uh, OBGYN facilities or any facilities that are taking care of uh, pregnant women, both low risk and high risk, um, have adopted the American Journal of OBGYN modified prenatal care protocols. And what that actually calls for are things such as reducing the number of in-person visits. Um, all providers and staff will be required to wear masks, as will the patients. If you don't have one to bring with you, usually the facilities will be providing one for you. Uh, telemedicine, appointments, telemedicine appointments will be made available if that's possible. Any significant other or support person will be asked to wait in the car. They will not be allowed in the office for your visits. Um, they will, if you are uh, brought into the hospital for whatever reason, 
both before, during, or after pregnancy. Uh, the hospitals will be cohorting patients into areas that are separated by those with infection and those that are without. Um, they will only allow one significant other or support person in a labor room at any one time and in the postpartum area. Any support persons who come to the hospital will be asked daily each time they come to fill out a questionnaire and will most likely be asked and have their temperature taken on entry. If an infant is born to a mother who is known to be COVID positive, it is almost uh, certain that that infant will be separated from the mother until it is deemed possible and safe for that infant to be reunited with uh, the mom. And you need to keep in mind uh, that all of this information that we're giving you is something that is constantly being subject to change and it's constantly being updated because we learn more about this virus every day. And so the protocols that we follow and the, whether that be at the office or at the hospital are all subject to change. So I'd like to thank um, um, the New Jersey Department of Health, which provided the bulk of this information that I've given you today. Most of that comes from well-known sources such as the CDC, the World Health Organization, and other healthcare resources. I'd also like to thank the Middlesex County Department of Health, which daily compiles all of the information that is provided not only by the Department of Health, but by other healthcare sources, and my colleagues at St. Peter's University Hospital for providing me with the information to try to help make sure that you get through this pregnancy, whether again, it's one that you've delivered already, one that uh, you're contemplating, or if you're already pregnant, uh, in the safest possible way. So with that being said, please stay safe.